if there is, let's suppose, there is very, very mild injury to this person due to any mechanism. Let's suppose due to some immunological mechanism, which I will discuss into detail later, there is a very mild injury. Suppose we can say grade 1 injury. Grade 1 is not a medical term. I'm just, for explanatory purpose, I'm saying that let's suppose someone has in his glomerulus very, very minor injury. When there's a very minor injury, the smallest molecule will start leaking. Now the smallest molecules are albumins. So what really happens, here is your albumin, here is your globulin, here is your fibrinogen. Now what really happens, that as soon as there's little injury, albumin start coming down into your end. And we say that there is albumin, albumin, urea. urea, right? And because only albumin is selected to be leaky and globulin is not allowed to leak, so we also call this situation either only albumin urea or we say patient has selective protein urea. Is that right? When next time you come across a term, selective protein urea, it means that albumin is allowed to leak, but the damage is not enough to allow the globulin to leak. Is that right? So selective protein urea can, is also a term which is used over selective protein urea. Right? So with grade 1 injury, right, or plus 1 injury, okay, make it simple. With plus 1 injury, right, which is very, very mild injury, you have only albumin leaking down. Now, let's come across another patient in which injury to glomerular structure is more than the first case. And if injury to glomerular structure is more than the first person, let's suppose here is plus two injury. It means membrane will become more, more leaky. And this time, this patient will have not only albumin coming down, but this patient will also have globulin coming down. So albumin is there plus globulin is there, right? And this type of protein urea is called, yes please, it is called non-selective protein urea, right? Let me repeat it. If there's very, this plus one injury, only albumin is allowed to leak but globulin will not leak. But injury is slightly more than that, then not only albumin will leak, but with the albumin, globulin will also leak. And we say there is non-selective protein urea. And now we go to another person, where injury is post plus three, right? Now what will happen? In this person, where injury is more, and pores are increased in number and increase in size significantly, of course, this person will have albumin urea, but very heavy albumin, plus this person will have globulin urea, but far more than the second patient, because injury is more. So protein urea in the third patient, right, is more than the second patient, and if albumin urea become more than 3.5 if protein urea, of course it is selective protein urea or non-selective protein urea. This is non-selective protein urea. If this protein urea here is more than 3.5 grams per day or, or it is more than 3.5 grams per 24 hour into urine, right? then further complications are starting, right? And this concept is very important, the difference between patient number two and three. Patient number two has non-selective protein urea. Patient number three has also non-selective protein urea. But here protein urea is less than 3.5 grams per 24 hour. But in patient number three, protein urea is more than 3.5 grams per day. And once protein urea in urine in adult become more than 3.5 grams per day, there is a major change in the whole clinical picture. What is the change? Actually, normally what happens that 
when there is let me make that this is your circulatory system right when there is protein urea proteins are being lost into urine right then this is the duty of the liver to compensate the proteins you know major source of plasma protein is liver hepatocytes are the synthetic machines right so as protein urea increases normally liver increases its synthesis of proteins so that it can compensate and maintain the reasonable level of plasma proteins in the blood now if protein urea become more than 3.5 grams per day then liver in spite of its full compensatory effort will not be able to maintain the plasma protein concentration at appropriate level what is the normal uh, per day production of proteins by the liver healthy liver can produce maximum how much proteins per day plasma proteins anyone attention please question is so simple that a normal healthy liver can produce when it is working at the maximum to compensate the urinary losses per day how much plasma protein it can really synthesize 78 what 78 grams per oh, i think uh, you have some monsters liver <laughs> yes yes 3.5 he tried to be logical you know because yeah. he think that if 3.5 is lost or if loss is more than 3.5 grams and then hypolipidemia develop it means liver cannot compensate so he logically thought out that it means liver cannot produce more than 3.5 grams per day per day and there he is wrong medical science like life is not that simple liver can produce daily 10 to 12 grams per day proteins plasma proteins which can be produced by healthy liver 10 to 12 grams per day but whenever in the urine losses are more than 3.5 grams blood proteins levels start going down in spite of the full production and we say hypoproteinemia develops or hypolipidemia develops what is this mystery that only 3.5 is coming into urine and it is able to contri contribute up to 10 to 12 grams but patient start developing hypoproteinemia who will solve this mystery for me isn't it mysterious <laughs> that from your pocket 3.5 is dollars going per per day out and you put 12 dollars daily but still your dollar level in the pocket is shrinking what is happening to your pocket <laughs> Yes, do you have some idea? Well, maybe that it's not only albumin it's making it's making a lot of proteins. No, uh, I'm right now concentrating about the plasma protein which are mainly albumin and globulin. And here the losses are albumin and globulin. Anyway, I appreciate the way you thought it. He thought that 10 to 12 grams mean it is making many proteins and out of them few are albumin and globulin. This is not the right uh, answer. The reason being 10 to 12 grams per day I'm talking about plasma proteins especially albumin and globulin I'm not talking about other coagulation factors and other complement proteins and other proteins is that right